Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Complexity is not good for anybody. With pooling, we address this specific problem that is uh, very severe when it comes to images. Now, the important thing is that as humans, we need to understand uh, what the CNN uh, tells us. And to be honest, if you watch the previous video, it's going to be a little bit tricky if we do that by looking at the output of a convolutional layer. So that's the reason why we are going to define in this uh, uh, video the final layer of uh, a CNN, which is called a fully connected layer. Before we start, just a recap on the uh, usual CNN architecture. Uh, we have the input image, the convolutional layer, and in this specific video, we're going to focus on pooling first, and then on the fully connected layer, which is uh, highlighted here. Now, the objective of uh, uh, to, of this video is uh, uh, yeah to complete the CNN pipeline and to understand uh, how we can. Uh, uh, use pooling, what is pooling, what is the difference between max and average pooling, and more importantly, uh, get acquainted with a super interesting uh, concept which is called translation invariance. Now, I would like to uh, first give you a couple of advantages uh, before describing the technique uh, per se, um, because uh, pooling really solves a lot of problems. It's not only about reducing complexity, but also, and more importantly, about uh, avoiding overfitting or at least mitigating overfitting as much as we can. So this is certainly one of the key aspects that makes pooling such a great uh, um, add-on for uh, CNNs. Obviously, yes, there is the complexity, but also there is uh, the ability to uh, make our um, detection translation invariant, which means that everywhere uh, in the image the object is located, we are able to classify it. Don't worry, uh, we're going to explore this uh, uh, towards the end of this video. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you an example uh, where it should be clear what, what I mean by pooling. Consider this uh, matrix of numbers, looks like um, a four by four image. Uh, in this case, we have only one channel, but it could be multiple channels, same thing. So what pooling does is dividing the image into different parts. And then for each part, we're going to apply a um, specific operator. Uh, in this case, it's going to be max pooling. So it's going to be the max operator, but uh, we can have other operators, a little bit like uh, um, we did with the uh, activation region and the convolution, right? So here, the important point that I would like you to grasp is that we are transforming these values uh, and uh, we are transforming the values uh, into a representation that is much simpler. So what we do here is uh, we take uh, one, uh, uh, one uh, portion of the image and then we max pull with a 2x2 two two filter and stride 2, which means that uh, we jump of two uh, pixels um, from uh, one step to the other. Uh, what this operation does is uh, it takes all the pixels in uh, this region here, uh, 1, 1, 5, 6, and we compute the max, which is obviously 6. That's it. So it's fairly uh, obvious what we're doing. It's uh, fairly simple. Uh, the important thing is that we want to repeat this operation for all the different pixels in the image. And that's what I'm doing now. I am uh, just computing the max over these four regions and this is the output. Now, a couple of interesting uh, thoughts about this output. As you, were, as you are seeing here, the dimension is a two by two while here uh, it was four by four. So we have simplified uh, our representation. That's great. Uh, another thing that I would like to uh, share with you is that uh, when we are uh, reducing uh, the dimension, uh, we are also essentially cons concentrating our attention on the 
uh, most uh, active pixel or, or most ac active uh, uh, region or sub-region within uh, our uh, matrix. And uh, this has a very important implication, as we will see later on, uh, for um, or when it comes to the speed of training. Now, before we uh, look at another example, I would like to share with you this animation uh, that essentially uh, give you um, another intuition on how this uh, pooling uh, is uh, uh, performed. Again, we have our sliding window. The sliding window is uh, going through all the pixels and uh, we essentially um, represent the uh, the um, sub-image or the let's say uh, value of the matrix matrix on the left with a more compact and a more rescaled representation on uh, the right. Now, uh, is max pooling the only option? As I said before, no. Uh, there is another option which is called average pooling. And uh, in this case, average pooling uh, uh, does the same thing, but it uses the average operator. So we have, uh, as you can see here, a smoother, um, yeah, a smoother output. While here, we are really focusing on the, the uh, darkest pixel. Here we have uh, uh, pixels that are a little bit more uh, shady essentially because we are distributing we are taking the average and the average has this low pass filtering uh, um, effect now another interesting thing uh, uh, before we wrap up on this is that uh, when we are pooling uh, we are essentially getting a summarized version of the features that uh, were detected in the uh, input so what you can see here is uh, a situation where we have uh, where we have actually a an image 200 by 200 this image is uh, down sampled 100 by 100 and uh, uh, this is uh, there is the equivalent uh, uh, pooling operator so uh, um, in other words we down sample our feature maps uh, and uh, the interesting thing the upside is that uh, there are uh, there are very interesting uh, uh, features that are um, represented in the same location and uh, uh, what we do here is really to add uh, one very important property to our model, which is uh, the translational invariance I was mentioning before. Let's have a look at uh, what these translational, translational invariance mean with an example. Now, let's say that uh, we have um, an object. This object is uh, located somewhere in the image. For instance, the boat in this case is in the middle of the image. Uh, it is a desirable property uh, to be able to detect this uh, object wherever this object is placed in the image. So, for instance, if uh, we have a, a um, another boat of another color, same shape, more or less uh, same size, in another position, uh, like for instance this one, we want to uh, detect it as well. So, no matter where the object appears in the image, you're able to get it. Um, now, the interesting thing is that uh, in all these cases, number one, number two, and number three, uh, we are uh, able to, uh, we would be able to detect uh, the object simply because we have uh, a pooling operator. Uh, it provides, so the pooling operator, it provides robustness to position. Max pooling is a smart way of reducing, reducing dim dimensionality uh, and at the same time it also reduces overfitting. Um, why that? Well, we'll explore it. Uh, the overfitting will be explored uh, uh, in uh, a couple of videos, but uh, in a nutshell, overfitting is uh, a, an effect of overtraining uh, that uh, it is caused by uh, several different, uh, uh, different uh, issues. But one way to interpret overfitting is that we have a lot of parameters and uh, with a lot of parameters, the capacity, the learning capacity of the network is uh, greatly increased, uh, but we also learn things that we shouldn't learn. So by reducing the computational um, complexity of the network, we reduce overfitting. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.